Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, May the 20th, and it's the continuation of Creature Feature Week. And we're going to be doing a weedy sea dragon today. All right, we're going to be using, again, the General Pencil Company 4B, a Milan Sway pencil sharpener, my Butterfly Original, a Prisma Color Kneaded Eraser, Office Depot Pink Eraser, and a High Polymer Eraser by Pentel. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of block out our composition, and we're going to be doing a number of things to do that. The first thing we're going to do is figure out where our head is going to go, and I'm going to put a circular kind of shape right here on the right-hand side. I'm going to draw kind of a, a triangular shape here. That's going to be the base of our Weedy Sea Dragon's nose. We're going to draw three concentric circles next to each other. One, two, three. Okay, and these circles are going to be uh, the body of our Weedy Sea Dragon. We're going to draw kind of like our spine here, and figure out where those shapes are going to go, and we're going to pull kind of a tail going this way, okay, hmm. I may, might need to make that a little bit longer, so I'm going to go and erase my head shape and start over, that's okay, that happens. Yeah, I'm going to put the head right here, a little bit more length in the neck. And then I'm taking my little triangle here to kind of represent the base of the Weedy Sea Dragon's nose. Okay. So what's cool about Weedy Sea Dragons is they're from Australia. Seahorses, sea dragons, and the like are not found in the Monterey Bay or on the west coast of the United States. They are tropical animals, and so weedy sea dragons, just like seahorses and the leafy sea dragons, are not native to California. And so we have them exhibited at our local world-famous aquarium. They are imports. So right, right now what I'm doing is I'm connecting these three, con these three circles here and using their shapes as kind of a guideline for everything else, okay? And I'm going to also be filling out the tail. They're cool, they're very cool creatures because they really look like those mythical creatures that we call dragons, at least the... European medieval ideal of what they are. So we're going to come back to the head, all right? And we're going to figure out where <laughs> Yeah, you should have. That was a long time ago. Well, not that long. You're not that old. Um yeah, so Tech Madness just messaged me and said, you know, if I had just known, you would I would have taken your class. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw an eye here, an eye socket, and then kind of the left side kind of socket that comes up just by making a little bump. Hello Sheila. And then we're doing the draw line here, which is very similar to this shape here, but it's going a little bit wider. And then another bump here. And then we're going to pull this shape down this way. Because of these long kind of snouts. Just like that. No, it's a, it's a weedy sea dragon. And they have kind of a 
spiky things on the top here, and then they also have kind of a, let's make a triangle shape here. I'm gonna come up here and make the first of many fins that are on the head. We're also going to include, they have these kind of fin things that kind of come out just like so. And then on the back of their neck, they have one more kind of leafy appendage, just like on the top of their head. Okay. And we're gonna draw the eye. So we're gonna create a circle. They have these like weird unblinking eyes. We're gonna make our light source again coming from the top. Top right. So we're going to do a cast light right here, reflecting off the eye. And kind of shape that space around the eye. Okay. Just like so. Spikes. Now that we have all these connected, we can just kind of get rid of some of these. We can just erase them. So we have the shape that we want. Now we're going to come down here to this, this hump right here. And we're going to create two little appendages coming down, just coming out of the body like so. And we're gonna make these kind of paddle shapes. And these are the way that our sea dragon is going to steer. Okay. A lot of the propulsion, believe it or not, is coming from these little guys near the head. Yes, well, every Wednesday, Tech Madness, I do dragons. So it's just kind of a, it's a way for me to kind of organize my week. So Tech Madness just asks, you know, is this like a, a thing, yeah. So I kind of have a little gullet right here. All right, this is smooth, leading up there. And they do have these little ridges on the top of their back, which lead to some other wings, which we're gonna kind of elongate and make a little bit bigger, because I want to emphasize Kind of dragon like. So they have one, two appendages that kind of come off just like so. And then they have much larger ones on the top. And I have these kind of receding back just like so. Because it's doing his own thing. Hmm. I'm liking that angle actually. I don't want to change that angle. So we'll just kick it over. fin back here. Yeah. 
And then as we get down here, we have some more, some more leafy kind of appendages coming off, right? And we're just gonna be filling in this architecture here. Right. No, no one's asked me to draw the coronavirus yet. <laughs> and though that's going to be a sculpture project that I do for myself, I believe. Riding waves. Hello. So we're also going to use this line here. And we're going to run this kind of through. Okay, so this is going to be an area that's going to delineate a lot of the ridges. Okay. So I'm putting in ridges right now, going all the way up. And you, if you are familiar with um, seahorses, they have these. Mm -hmm. We're also going to indicate these diving into each other. Just like so. All right. And finishing these off too as well. So right now I have a lot of students, my art students, finishing up final projects for this week. Oh, Oliver. So they're all kind of in a state of, not panic, but just pressure to get things done. They were given their final assignment last week, so they should have plenty of time to get certain things done in a timely manner. Okay, we have the basis for our sea dragon, our weedy sea, weedy sea dragon. <laughs> Maybe, I'll consider it. Uh, Marco just asked if uh, I could stream the Chalk Fest contest. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. All right, so there's also the unfortunate uh, thing here that I'm also doing this in just graphite and not watercolor. I'm sure I have some students who are like, why aren't you doing this in watercolor? Well, that's a good question. Okay, I'm using my Office Depot pink cut eraser. And just cutting away some of those lines. Yeah. I don't know. I'll consider it, Marco. No promises, brother. No promises. True, true, true. If we don't adapt, we perish. We'll see what happens in the near future with this whole thing. What we're gonna do, I have no idea.
Okay. So now we're just going to go through the process of shading this guy. Again, our light source is going to be coming from the right, upper right. So we're going to go through now and just kind of shade things. We're going to start from the left-hand side and work our way through. I'm going to use my kneaded eraser now. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful midwink. Today is hump day. Wednesday. Usually, on one of my favorite days of the week, Wednesdays are the beginning of block days. I like block days. I get a longer time with my students, more time for them to work on projects. Hello, Shirley. I hope you crushed it yesterday during AP Bio. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a distant grip. These fins are usually much darker than the main body of our weedy sea dragon. So all I'm doing right now is going to clean up my outside perimeter line for these fins. I'm going to do that all over, and then I'm going to begin shading. Yeah, and that just involves putting, adding some more pressure as I'm drawing. Finalizing some lines. Getting rid of the ones I don't need. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to use a distant grip, meaning that I'm holding it. Was it AP Psych yesterday? Oh, my bad. I'm sure you crushed it. So we're going to use a distant grip, add a pretty severe angle, and just begin shading. So we're going to go through and put down a medium to dark value within the space of the fin. And again, like I've always been saying during these tutorials, we're going to use this shading as the base. We can then darken as we go or lighten. And that creates po uh, possibilities and opportunities to really put some depth when you have a middle value or a darker value to create depth, create illusion of depth. So almost all these fins are gonna be darker. I put a little shading on the ridges too as well. And things further away from our light source, they're going to be darker. So you took your AP psych test. I forget what's today. I pushed, I've been pushing a lot of these live draws later on in the day. Because I know kids are taking high stakes AP tests now. We started last week. 
was it last week or was it two weeks ago? I can't remember. That's how crazy it's been. Okay. Now, put another pencil. Let me go through. This is to prevent me from smudging a lot of stuff over here. on this side here. I don't want to cover up my initial lines to define the ridges. But instead of color of these beautiful dragon, these beautiful dragons, I'm going to be using value texture to describe I guess color value. Hello, Miranda. My child, you owe me some artwork. No point in denying it. Not due until the 29th, though. But try and get it done. Okay. change that shape and that's the cool thing about drawings you can constantly cha make changes mid drawing did you run away Miranda I'm sorry didn't mean to put you on blast So as I turn my pencil, see how there's, I've created a kind of an angle there. I can always turn my pencil to create a sharp edge for doing those nice, clean, crisp, dark lines. For cleaning things up, I just turn the pencil and then I can always return to that nice angle that I've created later on. Over here, start really pulling out some of these ridges, readjusting angles.
Hi, Cammy. How are you? No, not not anytime soon, no. I stopped kind of taking kids to the aquarium. The ironic thing is when I joined Carmel High School, I had all these ideas about taking kids on field trips. It's actually more trouble having a field trip through Carmel Unified than any other district I've ever worked for. It's extremely hard. They do not make it easy. So I consolidated a lot of field trips to day trips during a period on block days to make my life easier and less stressful. And I find that if I do that, I don't get yelled at as much. So unfortunately, I haven't taken students to the aquarium since I started teaching at Carmel. It's just, um, it's more hassle than it's worth sometimes. There are some great things about Carmel Unified there are some really frustrating things about teaching there too as well. So that was a question posed by one of my, well, a student that used to be at a school I taught at. I'm gonna go back up to these fins. Oh, that's right, you took my cooking class. Tech madness, that's right, you took my cooking class. Huh. Flashback from the past. Yeah, we, I used to t teach cooking. It was a lot of fun. That's right, you took that with the wares. Well, you showing your age, brother. That was over 10 years ago. Uh, working through the after school program hello Jonathan how you doing buddy
Man, that was a while ago that I taught those classes. They were so much fun. That was when the culinary department at Seaside High was in a room adjacent to our football coach's room. So right now I'm using directional lines to kind of describe the space here. Gills. Forgot the gills, gotta include those. So I'm just working my way down. This whole area here is gonna be covered in little dots. Yes, they did. Back when you were in high school, Everybody Tech Madness wanted to draw either Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon. Yu-Gi-Oh! was the the latest and greatest though. Right? Hello Athena. How's it going, kid? How you doing? Way out. In Big Sur. You bored yet? Are they doing stage kids this summer? That's a question. Your last drawing of the semester, huh? Oh, no. I'm so sorry. I was wondering if you would be interested in helping us again for Art Expo, if we're able to have it. Would you be interested? And can you convince Liza to help too? Good. Awesome. That would be great. That would be absolutely wonderful if you could run critiques. And we're going to give you more of a, a leadership role in that aspect, too, as well. Good. Because she already said she wanted to do it, but, you know, the rate of everything that's going on. These guys usually have a bunch of a 
white dots. And it, it's kind of hard when you're on kind of a schedule here. So I'm just going to put some indicators here. but not actually draw every single one because I'm not crazy. Not for a, a draw that's this fast. Also got dots all over here. I guess I need to get A really fine eraser or something like that. I don't know. We'll figure something out in the future. I'm definitely running out of time, folks. So I might have to leave this drawing. I'm not get too detailed. So folks, we got ourselves a weedy sea dragon. I'm just finishing up some crucial things here. I can't remember what I was going to be doing tomorrow, what I'm doing tomorrow. But we're just going to continue this Creature Feature Week. Like so. So we're doing some middle values here. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Again, it's it's May 20th on a Wednesday during Hump Day. And we are continuing Creature Future Week. We're going to continue that tomorrow around the same time. It was wonderful reconnecting with a lot of you guys. No, I don't have... I'm sorry, Tech Madness. No, I don't have that. I don't have an answer to that question, unfortunately. DM me later. 
Um, so stay home, stay safe, and together we'll beat this thing. See you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye, Liz. <laughs>